So to refresh from last time, there are several steps in the process of the formation of a new species. Um, assorted of mating develops, which is where large organisms will mate with large organisms, small organisms will mate with smaller ones, and this is within a species. It's basically the tendency for like organisms to mate with other like organisms. After that we see isolation, um, which we can see in the development of mating barriers, such as mating dances, hybrid sterility, things like that, which basically prevent different types of um, organisms from mating. After that we can see differences accumulating, and one thing I mentioned previously that smaller populations are subject to more, um, or, or speciate quicker than large populations, and the reason for that is that small populations are subject to more genetic drift. And if you want to think about it from a statistical point of view, the smaller the sample size, the greater the chance you have to get differences from the mean. Well here, those differences from the mean can be thought of as genetic differences, and that's exactly why smaller populations, or in smaller populations, genetical differences accumulate quicker. So after all that happens, we have a new species. That being said, it's not always 100% crystal clear cut exactly when a new species is formed. That being said, it's not always 100% crystal clear cut exactly when a new species is formed. That being said, it's not always 100% crystal clear cut exactly when a new species is formed. As I mentioned before, there are several steps and organisms can lie at different positions on that gradient. Um, one such example demonstrating this is a phenomenon known as ring species, whereby you can have, uh, let's say that there are eight different populations of a single species of an organism. This happens a lot in birds and parrots. There's one species in Africa, I forget the name though, but it's a, it's a type of parrot that this is commonly seen on. And each population will be able to mate with the, the populations directly adjacent to it. But, and, and this goes and continues all the way around, every population can mate with the one next to it. And the populations at either end or across from each other are unable to mate. So this is one area which can be sort of gray in the question of, you know, has a new species formed or not? Um, the answer to this would, I think most biologists would agree that this is a species in the process of speciating and branching off. So this is one area which can be sort of gray in the question of, you know, has a new species formed or not? I'd like to shift the discussion now towards speciation in plants. For most plants, copper is relatively toxic, even in low amounts. Um, it's not surprising then that copper resistant plants would have an evolutionary advantage in areas of high copper. And we see that exactly around copper mines out in California. Uh, the yellow monkey flower, or mummulus, for example, um, has recently observed or been observed to have speciated into copper tolerant types. Um, specifically, Mummulus coprophilus is one of the examples. Uh, the yellow monkey flower, or Mummulus, for example, um, has recently observed or been observed to have speciated into copper tolerant types. Um, specifically, Mummulus coprophilus is one of the examples. Um, has recently observed or been observed to have speciated into copper tolerant types. Um, has recently observed or been observed to have, um, has recently observed or been observed to. Have Basically, these um, there were some mines that were last used around 1859, or were opened in 1859. There are several species, new species of Cooperphyllis that are only found in copper-rich areas around those mines. There and there are several species, new species of Cooperphyllis that are only found in copper-rich areas around those mines. There and there are several species, new species of Cooperphyllis that are only found in copper-rich areas around those mines. There are new species. and not wild type because when they are mixed with wild populations um, the offspring and hybrids are inviable so therefore they are a new species and not wild type because when they are mixed with wild populations um, the offspring and hybrids are inviable so therefore they are a new species